Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony Season 4, Episode 13, Simple Ways. So, what were your first impressions at the start of this episode? I was worried at first when, okay, wait, we're picking a pony to essentially plan a party. Wait, didn't we just do a party episode? And all I did was, I don't think it's going to be Pinky. I wonder who else? Oh, look, there's Ronald Scratch in the crowd. Yeah, because it definitely wasn't going to be Pinky, because that was too obvious. And I'm like, hmm, could it be Twilight Sparkle, the over-planner of the century? Yeah, it, it could have been her. Also, Pinky's zaniness as the, at the start was pretty good until her head inflated. Then I was like, you're pushing it a bit. <laughs> yeah, that was a little overboard for no reason. Mm -hmm. so I know she's supposed to be zany, but... The gag there is pushing it. Especially when coming directly after an episode where I'm more than just a gag pony. Then we're back into, I'm a background pony who does gags. We don't need that. <laughs> a little bit of zaniness is good. Like that start of it was good. Your little speech about, ooh, party, party. I'm a party pony. Of course it's going to be it. That's perfectly okay. But then suddenly holding your breath, inflating your head and bloating up. Yeah. That would have been okay for a Discord episode. Not so much for a regular episode. I think they really should have stopped when... I'm so excited I can't stand it and she falls over. That's about as far as it should have gone. So moving on from analyzing Pinkie Pie as a background pony. Next. I was trying to think of a segue to move over to Rarity's little demonstration. And I really liked her concept of small town chic. And during that scene, I also noticed that the gala dresses from season one were in the background. It was a very nice concept, and it was something that nobody else would have done for the Ponyville event. So I think even though we don't have any other events to go on, it was going to stand out from the other events. I also forgot to mention the fact that Rarity once again was using Spike as a slave to wield that giant model of Ponyville, which never gets mentioned again. Well, it doesn't get mentioned again because she changes her mind partway through the episode going, okay, this isn't going to work. So in order to get Trenderhoof's attention, I need to do something different. Mm. I also noticed that the drawings that she was using for her presentation may have been actual storyboard sketches from the show. That would be a nice touch if they were. I also like how they're using the stereo channels of the audio much better this season than they seem to in others. I know it's a lot of sweeping back and forth, characters being off screen, being off to one side on the audio, compared to how it usually just seems to float in the center in the other seasons. I can't say I noticed that, but I wasn't particularly listening for it. And you were also listening to it through laptop speakers. Yeah, which makes a difference on audio quality. I was kind of taken aback by Rarity's whole reaction with the Trenderhoof unicorn. Okay, number one, she has this crush out of nowhere. Rarity hasn't had any type of crush since but season one when she was angling for Prince Blue Blood. Also, what is with the sudden shyness? Rarity is usually a pretty composed pony. And, okay, she went to the Grand Galloping Gala in season one and held her own against Prince Blue Blood, a prince. So... Why is she suddenly so totally shy over Trenderhoof? It can't just be because, oh, he's more in, you know, the fashion and the trend-setting scene because she's gone up against Photo Finish, Hoity Toity, everyone that she went up against in the competition for Rarity Takes Manhattan. So this really just doesn't make sense for her character to suddenly be so shy. And going back to the start of that idea, her crush is very schoolgirly. And when did she get this crush? Because apparently it was a long-running crush. So did she have it before Blue Blood? Or did she get it sometime after Blue Blood? So yeah, where, as you said, where the heck did this come from? It came from being a retcon crush. That's where it came from. And of course, Rarity is the only character there who might be obsessed with boys. Yes, because we all know that just because a pony is interested in fashion, she must be boy crazy. And totally obsessed. I mean, did you see the clipping of hair? 
And apparently this guy has his own line of perfumes because there's a perfume there as well in that little shrine she set up. I was not expecting, you know, a Hey Arnold Helga shrine behind the panel. I mean, I understand wanting to impress Trenderhoof, but this whole crush thing, just, once again, we have a pony that I think is acting out of character, even while they're being focused on. And what is up with Trenderhoof's cutie mark? Does it, like, represent flannel or something? Because it's just a pattern from his shoulder. If you look at his shoulder, it's the same pattern he has on the shoulder of his outfit that's on his cutie mark. So what's up with that? I don't know. So I was like, okay, is it tweed? Is it plaid? It can't be just flannel. You know, this is Trenderhoof, trend-setting pony. And who names their kid Trenderhoof? <laughs> I guess they wanted his name to be a trend. I guess so. And continuing on the moment of Trenderhoof's arrival, not only Rarity's sudden inexplicable shyness, but okay, here's another non-Ponyville native who isn't going, oh my god, that's an alicorn! Because Twilight was right there! I did not even pick up on that. I actually, not really think back on it, I didn't even realize Twilight had wings during that episode. <laughs> I know she always has wings, but my brain didn't register them. Yeah, well, some episodes it seems like the animators are trying not to draw attention to the fact that she has wings. And then sometimes they're trying to make it very obvious that she has wings. And the fact that Rarity asked Fluttershy and Twilight to work on the same project, you know, pairing Pegasus with Pegasus, okay, Pegasus with Alicorn, is a nod to the fact that she's an alicorn. I also know the moment that they went to Sweet Apple Acres and he started obsessing over it was the moment of like, oh yeah, he's gonna fall for Applejack. This is what we're gonna get. God, I hope it's not gonna be a jealousy episode. We already had one of those and it was a really good episode. I know, we already had jealousy with Fluttershy and Rarity. And once again, almost the same lesson. So we're continuing the trend of recycling previous season's lessons. Mm. I didn't see it as that. I saw it as a completely different lesson. There wasn't really much jealousy going on. It was more of, I need to change myself to impress this other person, which is the way they phrased the lesson at the end of the episode. True. That was the point of it. It was more of, don't end up like the ending of the movie Grease. Don't change yourself just to get with somebody else or to get someone else's approval. But it still had elements of the episode with Fluttershy and Photo Finish with Applejack getting attention that Rarity wanted and not doing anything to deliberately draw that attention to herself and not really caring that she's receiving that attention. To compare it back to Photo Finish, Rarity wanted the attention on her dresses where Photo Finish chose to focus on the model, Fluttershy, who didn't really like being that much in the spotlight. So that's where I'm drawing the parallels. And now moving on to a great moment where Spike actually gets to comfort Rarity after she breaks down. I also love the animation touch of her mascara running. It's a very nice touch. But I also like when Spike's going, yeah, like that's never happened. And we get the fourth wall look to the camera. Oh, yes. That was a great moment of, oh, Spike, you'll never know my feelings. Looks at the camera. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, and that comment about him eating four almost extinct apples, or the apples they thought were extinct, all I thought was, rich. Mm. Yeah, so the apple's almost extinct, so you ate it. How Did you take seeds? Did you do anything, you know, to preserve this apple that was so rare it was extinct? Or thought to be extinct? That's also a great thing to say to an apple farmer who loves apples so much he named the trees. It was not the best way to try to relate, but I just think there was a very large gap there between trend-setting, world-traveling unicorn and family-oriented, hard-working, homebody earth pony. Not that we can't have inner pony type relationships. It was more a difference in their life experience than their pony type. And I noticed the fact that he actually carries a comb in his pocket. A little vain, don't you think? Apparently, male unicorns that are the focus of Rarity's affections have to be vain. 
Because that's an excellent word to describe Prince Blue Blood. I could have sworn Rarity has seen Big Mac using a plow before, so how did she at least not know how to harness herself up to the plow and get it going? Also, why didn't she have Spike pull it? I was expecting her to have Spike pull it, and really, she's seen a harness before. In the Diamond Dog episode, she was hooked up into a harness, so she knows the general idea. So it was one of those moments of, oh, never mind what the character would actually know. It's funnier this way. I like how we also finally see, it's a nice little animation touch, that not always all the apples fall into all the baskets. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I think in every other animation, they've all fallen right into the basket. Makes it a little bit more real worldly, even though we're talking about a world with pastel colored ponies. True, but at the same time, the focus of this episode was, you know, real earthy, down home work ethic. So I think they ramped it up a little bit for the farm, except for that part where it was all shiny and sparkly at the very beginning when Trenderhoof was going, ooh, a farm. Dirt so homely. I've never felt dirt this homely before. It's dirt, dude. Oh, really? Get over it. And didn't Rarity's fake country accent hurt your ears at first? At first? <laughs> I thought I'd be nice. It was painful all the way through, which I hope was the point. I'm pretty sure it was because Tabitha St. Chamin is a really good voice actor and she showed that in this episode with a lot of different things that she did with her voice, especially the kind of... I can't. At the beginning when she was hiding underneath Twilight's tail. Yeah, and did you notice that when she was hiding under Twilight's tail it kind of looked like she had Twilight's main style? Mm-hmm. Also, wasn't that a wonderful title drop when she goes, Simple Ways! Uh, yes, Simple Ways. And not simple as in uncomplicated, but simple as in simpleton. Because, really, Rarity? You've known Applejack for how long and been friends for how long? Even if you decided to go all out country, you know better than that. Yeah, she, she makes so many insults to rednecks for the rest of the episode, it's kind of painful to watch. <laughs> Though I do love the battle between Rarity and Applejack. And it's great that that really shows there how their friendship has grown throughout the seasons. Only at this point could they have actually had this fight and it would have made a point to Rarity. I just want to know, did Applejack style her mane like that by herself or did she have help? Because this was a one pony intervention on getting Rarity to see reason. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that myself. I almost think that she asked Fluttershy to help her get into the outfit and put the hair up. Possibly, but remember that when Applejack was a foal, she went to stay with her cousins in the Orange family, so she could have picked up a few tricks. And going back to the train station, her uncle, Orange, was actually in the background. Oh, totally missed that. Also, surprisingly, Rarity's messy mane actually looks really good on her. <laughs> or it doesn't look that bad. Well, her mane down looked nice. But it was the whole close-ups where, you know, it's not combed and she has split ends and, you know, the, the flies were a little overdone. It's like, country doesn't mean filthy. Though I'm appreciative of how long Rarity managed to maintain this whole country dirt rector hoof a cure. Charade or charade. Yes. Even to the point of jumping into the mud right before she comes to her senses. And it's actually the dirt falling on Applejack, aka Rarity's dress, that made her go, Oh my god! I'm so sorry! But then with Applejack being like, well, it's okay. It's not your dress. You don't get to say it's okay. And Rarity's immediate reaction when, That's my dress? Spike! Get me cleaning supplies now! No, but hot water isn't how you take out mud. You let mud dry and then you brush it off. Though they may not have had time for that considering when the Ponyville Gala was supposed to start. Though Rarity has how many dresses, Applejack could have worn a different one. I like how right after Rarity learns a lesson, she gets a chance to explain it to someone else. Giving her the opportunity to actually spell out the episode without her actually spelling out the episode. Without resorting to the journal or another incident of Rainbow Eyes, since she already had her generosity lesson, and this wasn't a generosity lesson. This was one of those to thine own self be true lessons. 
Do you have anything else to add about this episode? Why wasn't Rainbow Dash going crazy excited over having a cider tasting? We've established in two episodes that Rainbow Dash loves cider. Yeah, and she was pretty obsessed in those particular two episodes in this season, too. Yes, both in the Super Cider Squeezy whatever episode, she was absolutely insane. And then it came up again this season with the Vampire Fruit Bat episode. I mean, the only real in between reference to the cider tasting was when Spike showed up with the cider tasting cap. Which I think is their way of saying, oh wait, that cider's not alcoholic cider because Spike's gonna taste it. Because without that you could imply that this was a wine slash alcohol tasting kind of thing. Well that was kind of the vibe that they were using and that's kind of the type of tasting you would have at this sort of event, but this is a kid's show so nobody gets drunk in canon. Referencing back to the Grand Galloping Gala and Pinky's take on parties and party music, why did we only see slow dancing? You didn't tell me that Pinkie Pie hmm. and Vinyl Scratch would not have gotten up there sometime during the night and changed the tone? Let's get my bass cannon! This party needs to be rocked! <laughs> I got my party cannon! <laughs> yes, even though it was going for a more elegant feel, which the dance and the cider tasting and the fashion show all gave. It was very nice of Applejack to be in the fashion show. I also love the fact that the guy kind of straightened himself out and went, uh, how about a dance with you, Miss Granny Smith? That was nice, because when he first walked up, I'm like, oh, is he really going to ask Applejack or is he going to ask Granny Smith? Mm, the trope says he should ask Granny Smith. Who he should find fascinating as one of the people who was around when Ponyville was founded. Mm hmm She probably has plenty of stories, like the most scariest or dangerous cave in Equestria. Oh, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> Only Pinkie Pie would go through a cave like that and go, ah. It's a good thing that wasn't the other cave. <laughs> All right, so one other thing would be Trenderhoof's constant reference to the work ethic of Earth Ponies. I'm pretty sure that Pegasi and Unicorns aren't lazy. And I'm pretty sure that Earth Ponies aren't the only ones to ever farm in their entire lives. So I'm going to put that down to having a unrealistic image of what the world's actually like based on the types of places he was traveling to. Mm, all too exotic, not enough down to earth. Which kind of explains why he likes the down to earthness of Sweet Apple Acres. Because I think he even says, oh my god. An actual down-to-earth farm? That actually grows apples. It's actually a farm. Which makes me think that his previous idea of a farm was like a cultivated garden slash park. Or a supermarket. Because he really acted like, I've only seen these in pictures. Very much so. Because it, it was all of, ooh, this is fascinating. Fascinating. Never seen this before. Fascinating. The way you're sitting right now, it sounds like you've turned it into Spock. He even has the pointy ears for it. <laughs> this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 13, Simple Ways. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, and thank you for listening. Hope to speak with you soon.